so in the coming videos we will try to calculate the carrier concentration in semiconductor so our aim is to calculate carrier concentration that is we want to calculate n naught as well as p naught that is equilibrium carrier concentration in semiconductor material so once we have found out the carrier concentration we can study about currents in semiconductor in order to derive carrier concentration we need to understand fermi dirac distribution function and fermi levels they play an important role in analysis of semiconductor devices then once we have understood what is fermi level and fermi dirac distribution function we can discuss about fermi levels in intrinsic n type as well as p type semiconductors let's start with fermi dirac distribution function so the fermi dirac distribution function is a simple function the only complication is in its derivation now we won't be discussing about how we go to fermi dirac statistics or its details but we will see and use the fermi dirac distribution function to calculate our carrier concentration so let's look at the function we have f of e equal to 1 by 1 plus e power e minus e of by kt so this is our fermi dirac distribution function now k is the boltzmann k is the boltzmann constant and its value is we'll be using the unit electron volt per kelvin always remember that instead of joule per kelvin we'll be using k value at the unit electron volt per kelvin because for energies we will preferably use electron volts so always remember that if you are substituting for energies electron volts use boltzmann constant value in electron volt per kelvin and its value is 8.62 into 10 power minus 5 electron volt per kelvin and t is the absolute temperature so what fermi dirac distribution gives is the it gives the probability that an available state e will be occupied by an electron at absolute temperature t so it gives the probability it gives the probability that we can find an electron at an available state e at absolute temperature t now let's take a look at the units so here we have probability which is dimensionless so the term on the right side should also be dimensionless so we have 1 by 1 plus e power if we use electron volts for the unit we have electron volts divided by for k we have the unit electron volt per kelvin into unit of temperature that is kelvin so kelvin and kelvin will get cancelled electron volt and electron volt will get cancelled and we have a dimensionless right hand side as well so this is a quick tip to see whether you have got the right equation so let's remove that for now at a particular temperature and for a given material it's a single variable function now ef ef is the fermi level in order to understand what is ef let's say we will find the probability of electron at the fermi level so what is the probability that an electron can be found at the fermi level so if we calculate f of ef that is the probability of finding an electron at the fermi level we will get 1 by 1 plus e power e minus ef by kt that is the e here is ef so ef minus ef by kt all we have done is for e we have used ef that means we are finding the probability of finding an electron at fermi level so that is equal to 1 by 1 plus e power 0 that is equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 that is equal to that is 1 by 2 so fermi level is the energy level where the probability of finding an electron is 1 by 2 so fermi level is that level where the probability of finding an electron is half so fermi level has the probability of 1 by 2 of being occupied by an electron now that we have seen the different terms in this distribution function now we will take a look at how the function looks like at different temperatures